question which says describe the structure of dna so like i would normally say to you please pause the video and see if you can try this before you see the answer the answer is usually this floating tab here so let's move on to it let's i want to assume you've attempted it so here we go so this is a polymer let me use a pointer this is a polymer of nucleotides each of these nucleotide is formed from deoxyribose sugar so the idea is this this is a five marker question so you want to make sure you go in sequence saying that okay folks of course it's nucleotide so to say not only nucleotides and this nucleotide contains what deoxyribose sugar a phosphate group and a religious base so you want to pay attention to the things i mean saying i mean i'm, I'm emphasizing here the things that forces that let me let me okay that cause that, that forms that the oxidable sugar the phosphate and the nitrogenous base that's your keyword in that sentence and it says also the, the nucleotide are joined by what phosphodiester bond that's another key point there to form the strand of the dna now the two strands of the dna are joined by what hydrogen bonds so you can see that then we will need to know that okay from the two strands the complementary base goes in in this way which is adenine is complementary to thiamine and while uh, guanine is complementary to cytosine i mean through the hydrogen bond we already mentioned here okay that made sense so just pause this again and go through that very well please those i mean this is a well arranged point which will give you um the exact mark if, if, if not even more than the mark required okay now the next question says describe how a phosphodiester bond is formed between two nucleotides within a dna molecule so that's two marker okay so pause and attempt that first so how do we do that so phosphodiester bond is formed between adjacent phosphates and the oxidable sugar so if you remember the structure of of um the dna usually you're going to see that later on in this in this um, past paper we're doing you see that structure but it's between the um phosphates and the i mean adjacent phosphate and the deoxyribose sugar so to say then you can say that this is formed by a condensation reaction because of course whenever you join something together you know what will be released then it says here this reaction is catalyzed by what dna polymerase because actually this dna i mean for you to have um nucleotides to build up which that's why you need phosphodiester bond that means you're building up a whole chain of dna i mean or a strand and that's that's during dna replication so to say and this you need this enzyme called dna polymerase hope that made sense so moving on now uh you may want to pause the video here there's a number of information you need to take uh, note of which are this it says the two strands of particular gene contain 168 guanine bases between them now the relationship between these you know is always um a to g t to c all of those like, that's fine okay now there's this equation that you work with don't forget this particular number here so g equals to four into bracket this equation just that so Use this information and your understanding of DNA structure to calculate the maximum number of amino acids coded by this chain. So you have to show your working. So how many marks we have actually? Two marks. So but you need to let me pause. Let me give, leave this for you. Make sure you truly, I mean, attempt think about this before um, I sh you, you you see my answer. Okay. Now, so this is it. You know that if it says here it contains um, guanine, sequence of 16 base of guanine, and you know that <coughs> A to C, I mean A to T, C to G, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, this is what I'm trying to say here, A to T and C to G, you know this. So what that means to you is this, it means that whatever G is, that's what C is. So that means, that's how I wrote it here, I said, if G is 128, therefore 168, therefore C is 168. Now, so if you put that in this equation, so what, what am I saying is this. So you just substitute your G in there and your C in there. That's why you have this. 
So by the time you move the C, I mean this to the other side, to come on arithmetic, you know, the sign changes, then you have this. Then you divide both sides by four. Well, this is basically mathematics anyway. Both sides by four, you're going to have um, um, 84. So that means both A and T are actually 84. But don't forget that we said that A is equal to T. So whatever A is, that's what T is. And is the addition of two of them should be a number. So that means this 84 should be split between two of them. So therefore, A is 42, um, T is 42 because that means this was divided into two. Okay. Now, the total basis now will be what? So when we say the total basis, it means, okay, let's now calculate all the bases together. So that means we have um, both A and T. This is what we have for A and T. And so we have for C and G. And that's for 20. So we divide that into uh, base template, which means one strand of the DNA. Because this is two strands of DNA. But we only want to work with one strand. So this is one strand. So you're like, why do you divide it by two? Because the, I'm going to write it because this is just one strand. So I'm saying this is one strand, this one strand. So these two strands is what you have. That's what you have your 420. But we just want one strand. And that's what we divide it by two. Okay, so you now have 210. So now here there's three bases from one amino acid. So because the question says how many amino, maximum, maximum number of amino acids. So you know that three sequence i mean three bases say c c t that is one amino acid that will code for one amino acid okay so that means that we divide our 210 by three that means how many of these three three can we have in 210 that's how we did this and that will be 70 so you have 70 um amino acids so that means this whole structure can make 70 amino acid but if you're going to talk about the whole thing say the whole of 420 that's both template one and template two that would then be 140 hope that made sense you can always rewind the video to get that part again okay describe the role of dna polymerase in semi-conservative replication now the role of dna polymerase is to do what join adjacent nucleotides this is a condensation reaction, like we said earlier on. This leads to the formation of phosphodiester bonds between the nucleus. This is basically almost the same question we answered earlier on in another way. Okay. Now the question here says: draw and label a single nucleotide. That's um, a two marker. From here, you can see that that's a two marker. So let's see what the answer is. So there you go. So you have your actual dna i mean sorry deoxyribose sugar ring that's one then the phosphate and the base so of course you don't have to make you don't have to be specific about it, just base which because it can be a it can be c it can be t it can be g so but either way it just base is okay for that for you to get your two marks now the next question let's go to the next question the next question says Give two features of DNA and explain how each one is important for the semi-conservative replication. So what is this two features in DNA and how is that important in um, semi-conservative replication? I mean, just think right now, what are the what are the components of DNA, the way it is arranged, the structure, and what's the importance of that in semi-conservative um, replication? So, and that brings us here. Now, the hydrogen bonds that holds the two strands together is weak. What's the essence of that? It makes it easy to what to unzip or to break. Okay. Now, each of these strands are what complemented to each other and can act as template to each other. That's good. Then each strand can serve as template. Just basically saying the same thing. Sorry, that was supposed to be can can serve as template. Hope that made sense. Just Anyway, it's just two markers anyway, so you're good. The next question here. Uh, the diagram shows a part of DNA molecule. How many nucleotides are shown in the diagram? Name the type of bond between in X in the diagram. The enzyme helicase and uh, polymerase are involved in DNA application. 
describe it. This is a lot of questions at the same time. So let's start with the first two, one, two. So what is the answer to that? Just think about that now. So if you look at that, is how many nucleotides can you count? Well, this is a nucleotide. What's that? Phosphate, deoxyribose sugar, base. So if you count that, so this is one. Let me do that very well. One, two. So I didn't do that very well. This is one, please. Yeah. This is two. This is three. Take note of that. There are three things. This is four. So on both sides, so this is four here. This is also four here. That's that's why it is eight. So what what's bond X? Apparently this is, this is four. So that is the bond there. Okay. So it says here. Okay, I hope you've not seen the answer already. Let me just answer it there. And it says the rep the DNA, the enzyme, helicase, and DNA polymerase are involved in the replication. Describe the function of each of these. Okay, so what's the function of these, each of them? What do they do? So this helicase helps to unzip or unwind the DNA molecule by breaking hydrogen bond. The polymerase join the adjacent nucleotides together through phosphodiester bond. You can see the consistency of how polymerase works because it's another question in this <clears throat> this is a compilation of different questions from different years that's why you can actually have i mean some questions being repeated okay okay so now the next question says here um adenosine trisphosphate is an inocleotide derivative contrast the structures of atp and the nucleotide which is found in dna and gives the differences. So, because the truth is this, the nucleotide in DNA has a bit of similarity with ATP. If you, if we don't have in class before, you know what I'm saying. But uh, either way, try to think about those structures and let's see the differences. So there you go. So ATP has a ribose, while DNA has a deoxyribose. Then ATP has three phosphates. Apparently, that's what it's called adenosine triphosphate. While it, it DNA um, nucleotide, while DNA has only one phosphate place in its nucleotide. Then the nitrogenous base is <coughs> in ATP is adenine. While the nitrogenous, while excuse me, while the bases in DNA are basically four: A, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. So this only has one um, base, while DNA has four bases, so to say. So that explains a whole lot of that. So the next question says, scientists determined that a sample of DNA contains 18% adenine. What were the percentage of thymine and guanine in this sample of DNA? So it is, this is what they give us in this question. So what will be? The percentage of those two think about it don't forget the fact that a is complementary to t and c is complementary to g okay so the answer is this so like i said it here so this is a is equals to t so what does that mean uh that means that if a is already uh 18 percent apparently t is also 18 percent so that means we are meant to add up the two of them and take that away from 100 and that gives us 64 and because c is complementary to g now you wonder why did you do that i'm just reminding you that three hydrogen bonds hold c to g c and g together that's a point you should take note of now so uh that means this 64 should be split between the two of them because they're complementary so if it's divided by two that would be what 32. Hope that made sense. Okay. The next question is this. During replication, the two strands of DNA molecules separate and each act as a template for the production of a new strand. So, what do you do? So, name the enzyme in the diagram. I mean, you should know that already. And that is DNA polymerase. Hope that made sense. So the next question says, the table below shows the percentage of bases in each of the strands of the DNA. So you have two strands, say it's strand, excuse me, say strand one and strand two. So that means 
uh, you have some from here, you have some from here. And you're going to get the rest right. So to say, that's what that wants us to do. So what we're supposed to do now is this. Try to remember the fact that I told you that A is complementary to C, I mean to T, and C is complementary to G. Okay, let's try and see what the answer is. So what do you do? You like wonder how do you get the whole thing? The first thing you're supposed to do is look for. So here you can see A on this strand. And we know that A is complementary to T. So this is T on the second strand. So whatever A, what I'm trying to say is this, this is A to T. So if A is 16 on strand one, then T must be 16 on strand two. So that's why you have this. So after you've gotten that, what you need to do is what you add the three of them together. 21 plus 4, 34 plus 16. So if you add that together, that should be um, 71 or thereabouts. So 100 take away 71. That means your A on that same on the, on the second strand will now be what 29. So because if you take it, so you add all of this together and take that away from 100. Now I want to establish that. So if this is 29 on strand one, you should know that this will be 29 on strand. I mean on strand two, this will be 29 on strand one. So that's why, excuse me, that's why this is also 29. But I think the remaining is easy to get because C to G, that's it. So if G is, um, I mean, if C is 21 here, then G is 21 here. If um, um, G is 21, 34 here, C is 34 here. As a matter of fact, that's the one you should even do first, really, if you can do that, really. I mean, you can just do that. I mean, you can start with that one, but it doesn't matter the other in which you do it, just get the answer. Would oh, that make sense?